It's a while since I've done a chill out video, just randomly modifying something just because I quite like modifying stuff. And I think the last one of these I did was about six years ago. They've changed the design slightly in these, I notice. They've gone for plastic bottles instead of the glass ones. But anyway, uh, this is a super, super cheap uh, air freshener. And by air freshener, I mean they pollute the air. And the nice thing about the super cheap ones, and I'm talking about a pound for the full thing, it's actually cheaper just to buy the whole thing than it is to buy a refill. Uh, the nice thing about these ones is that they're held together by a couple of screws. That compares badly with many of the sort of higher profile branded ones like Earwick, which are held together by uh, heat stakes so you can actually do anything to it. So here's what is in the air freshener. There is a resistor, 2.4 watt, uh, 24K, that will pass about 10 milliamps. And all that happens is the resistor gets hot and it's mounted in such a way that when the, well, let's put this resistor back in and take a look at that. I shall sit it in like this and we'll hold the bottle in and see how it goes. So it, the resistor is basically held at the sides because the middle of it is the bit that gets hot. And when you put the aroma bottle in, it has a wick and when it's sat into the crack position, it holds a wick just next to the heater so that the, the wick is heated up but it doesn't touch the heater. Now, not touching the heater is probably quite important because, I'll just zoom down this, if it touched the heater, it could actually potentially wick into it. I'm just wondering, does this have a coating on it? I don't know if it has a coating. What happens if you touch it, the wick? Does it go in? No, it kind of sits on the surface, or is it going to go in? It is just kind of sitting on the surface. I've probably made it dangerous now. Oh, good. But uh, the idea is that it just heats up, and when it heats up, it mm, evaporates the smell into the air, and actually this fruity one is actually one of the nice ones. It's actually better in many ways than uh, certain other higher-profile brand ones. But anyway, to modify this, I am going to... Uh, see what I can actually, I'm going to draw in here where I've got space to put the LEDs. All I'm going to do is put the LEDs in inverse parallel with one of the leads here. So to make sure I don't encroach on the case here, I'm just going to draw a line in here. And then I shall drill a couple of holes the LEDs, but I'll also uh, hold the bottle in and see where it actually hits so I don't put uh, LEDs in a position that are going to obstruct the bottle. There's not a lot of room, just basically close to the top of that line is where I'm going to be able to fit those LEDs in. Okay, I should put the lid in that. I what's going to happen. I'm going to knock it over. I wonder how many problems they have with people just laying these air fresheners down on the side and then this stuff liquid dripping out onto the heater block. I do notice the construction is such they've got a ceramic housing and then they've laid this sort of wire-wound section in and then they've put cement on top of that. It would probably cost us more for one of these resistors than it costs for the entire thing. That's how things normally work. I have a drill. I shall drill a hole here. Initially I'm going to drill a 3 mill mill millimeter pilot hole. And I'll drill one roughly here. That's looking all right. Then I shall widen that out to 10 millimeter, uh, 5 millimeter. 10 millimeter would be a bit over generous. Now, because I'm putting the LEDs in inverse parallel, I shall draw the circuit diagram for that. It's not going to be a terribly sophisticated circuit diagram. Put the drill out the way here. Uh, let's bring the notepad in. I shall draw that. Here is what we're going to get. Uh, by default, the circuit is there's AC in, live, neutral, doesn't really matter. Basically speaking, it just goes to a great big resistor, which gives off lots and lots of heat. Uh, and in doing so, vapor vaporizes the aroma. And it is uh, 2.4 watt, 24K, 24K. Our voltage locally is 240 volts, so say about 10 milliamps. Uh, which is good. All I'm going to do is I'm going to break one of the lines and I'm going to put in an LED point in that direction and an LED point in that direction. 
And then that means that uh, one of these LEDs will light neither half wave and it will also clamp the voltage down. So they'll actually alternate backwards and forwards. If they were the same colour, it wouldn't really show, but I'm going to actually make them green and blue. I've already looked the LEDs out because I think green and blue would look good. Probably terrible with the red liquid, but it'll work well with this one. That was not a complicated circuit diagram. That is one of the easiest in a long time. So the holes have been drilled. Let's get some rags of plastic off and stuff the LEDs in. One will be going with a positive up to the top and the other one will be going with a positive down to the bottom. That's a long lead. And they are a nice friction fit. Now I'm going to fold those leads across and solder them to each other. Well, that's so easy. It's actually working quite well. I, I shouldn't say that in case it all goes horribly wrong. This probably is a, makes this product dangerous in some way. All the best products do. So I'm going to flow some soda on here. Another change in this design. I don't remember seeing this little fin before. I wonder if that's to keep the wires separate because they are fiberglass insulated for the heat. And I wonder if that's, uh, I guess that's just bare wire inside. So if they were close together and some of the liquid ran down, it was conductive that could theoretically penetrate and track. Although they look as though they've got that silicon coating on them. Right, now I've uh, done that, let's put this resistor in here for size. Okay, and I shall cut. that lead there, right in the middle of the LEDs. And I shall solder that bit. I shall flow some solder onto it. I don't think this will get hot enough to actually melt the solder. It doesn't really get that hot in use. Although 2.4 watts is still quite a bit of power. It would feel hot to the touch. So now uh, that wire is soldering there. Oh, I can feel the heat traveling up the wire. Uh, and the other wire here, these are just sort of pinched in. Oh, they're quite loose in fact. Sloppy loose connections. I wonder if they arc. I don't think it'd be that much arcing anyway, because it is very low current. Uh, I'm going to crop that down a little bit. I once made a lamp, one of the generic Chinese lamps, but uh, I modified the circuitry so it was a psychedelic. It alternated between red and blue. It was inverse parallel LEDs. It was very good. It was really not what you'd want in your house all the time, though. I shall add a touch of solder here, since this is where this wire is going. And I shall touch that on, and then hopefully the thing will actually sit back down into its location properly. This is pointless. It's not like I even really want an air fresh in the house. As I say, they just really put out volatile organic compounds. I just caught that. Barely caught that wire, I think. But I think it's all right. It is all right. Excellent. So now, theoretically, if I put this back together, if it goes back together, then... Uh, that resistor is in position, double check, LEDs are all in position, no dodgy wires ever. I'll just bend that one away from there, that's fine, that'll do it. Is that going to fit? I think it's a close fit, but it is a fit. And now theoretically, if I screw this back up and plug it in, I wonder if those LEDs are going to foul the bottle. I'll find out when I try putting the bottle in. This is effectively the complete opposite of my recent ozone uh, videos where it generates of active air, com air, air components. This is doing the complete opposite. It's producing air contaminants, the things that the ozone would be trying to deplete. So I'll use the clear bottle for this one. Is this going to fit? 
No. <laughs> yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Actually, I think those LEDs are sticking through too far. Let me double check here. I may have to squish them in a bit. Yeah, they're, they're sticking through too far. Maybe I should have used smaller LEDs. I shall try pushing them back. Maybe the uh, straw hat LEDs would be better for this. Is that going to work? Oh, that's fine. That's uh, that's better. They just needed squished in. Also, I'm wondering then, I think that I may have been pushing this air freshener in squint and that wouldn't have helped. Right, tell you what, that is it. I plug it in. Does it burst into flames in my head? Oh, oh, right, okay. It, it did go bang. Right. Why did it go bang? And it blew one of the LEDs off. Excellent. Right Righty-ho. Uh, that's not right. Did I do this right? I think I did this right. Maybe I didn't do it right. Maybe it just didn't like. Uh, oop. Oh, you know what? You know what? It shorted out in the other lead and then it went bang. It did actually short direct the LEDs directly across live and neutral. How lucky was that? That was uh, what you call an excellent uh, piece of precision engineering. Uh, right, so uh, that's, uh, you see a little hole in it? It's gone through there. And that's why you probably shouldn't modify your air fresheners with LEDs against the manufacturer's instructions. Right, one moment please. Okay, take two with fresh LEDs since the other ones have been decapitated. Well, one of them has been decapitated and got gone black inside. That's nice. It didn't blow the fuse in the uh, extension though. This is good. LEDs make extremely good fuses. They just make that little pistol shot crack and a bit of plastic flies off the front. It's just how they feel. It's resulted in lots of disappointment. I've been trying to blow LEDs up del deliberately. And they've just done that sort of controlled failure thing. Oh, here we go. So this time it's not going to blow up probably. I mean, I didn't think it was going to blow up last time. And it blew up. While I was holding it. Excellent. It could have done. It could have done with being more uh, violent just for extra drama. But it didn't. So this should uh, fit perfectly. Um, I cropped the LEDs down. I did that thing where you cut the lens off the front of them. It just makes them a bit shorter. Three, the straw hat or three millimeter LEDs might have been a better option. Will it blow up again? No, it didn't blow up again. And we're getting that effect. Now, if I turn this down, the camera should actually give us a slow-mo effect because of the actual speed of this. So if I take the exposure off and I turn this light off, you get that sort of strobing effect. Oh, I like the the liquid in there as well. But when you wave your finger there, it looks cyan to look at. But when you, there's a movement, it alternates blue and green. It's quite a nice effect. It's a nice colour, actually. It's a very attractive colour. Righty, OK. Uh, I'll go and plug this into a sock and hope it doesn't blow up again now. That's the job done. Um, but there we go, uh, another trashy, crappy, he said, lying down its side, just like he said earlier, with all the liquid dribbling it onto the resistor. Another crappy uh, modification to a, um, a Roma plug.